Welcome to the second annual Wings Club Lunch in Geneva, Switzerland. My name is Greg Thomas and I'm the president of the European chapter of the Wings Club. The Wings Club is a venerable aviation club founded in New York in 1942. Its membership has always represented the leading personalities and achievers in the aviation industry. Previous members have included Juan Tripp, Sir Frank Whittle and Neil Armstrong. The Wings Club holds 10 lunch meetings a year in New York and two lunch meetings a year in Europe. The club holds an annual dinner at the Waldorf Astoria in New York every year, at which it honors one individual's outstanding contribution to aviation. This year's annual dinner will be held on Friday, October the 21st. So we encourage you all, to, if you haven't booked tables already, to, uh, to book tables for that event. The next Wings Club lunch will, in, will be held in New York next week. Um, we are very honored today to have the president of the club, Dave McKay. Dave, if you could stand up and be recognized. We're also very honored to have the vice president of the club, Mr. Bruce Whitman. If you could stand up and be recognized, Bruce. We're also joined uh, by uh, another board member, uh, Tom, if you could stand up. Yeah. Um, one of the traditions of the Wings Club is the recognition of the head table. So um, if I, uh, when I mention your name, if you could raise your hand or bob your head or whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, today on the head table, I'm joined by Marwan Kalik from Gamma. Ray Caldero from ATG, <laughs> Napo Hone from SETI Aviation, <laughs> Brian Humphreys, the chairman of the European Business Aviation Association, <laughs> Lord Alexander Hesketh, <laughs> Ali Reza Itihadia, <laughs> Simon Price from BBA. Peter Edwards from Jet Aviation, and Niall Olver from ExecuJet. Um, the final person on our head table is our speaker today, John Rosenvall of Dassault. John will speak uh, at 1.15 during coffee. Um, we understand they're all busy, and as I said, we're aiming to close the proceedings here at 2 p.m. sharp. John will be open to answer questions after his speech, so if you can start thinking about that during your lunch. Et bon appétit, everybody. Thank you, Greg, for making me feel old, number one. Thank you for allowing me to speak without my jacket. And last, but most importantly, thank you for allowing me to make that speech in French. <laughs> Bonjour et bon appétit. Just would like you know to share a few thoughts with you in uh, three areas, which maybe will uh, hopefully will interest you. The first one, you know, is giving you an overview of what I think of the current uh, status of uh, the market environment for our good industry. Number two, speak about some of the challenges we still face in Europe uh, with business aviation, and third, a very brief commercial about the Dassault Falcons. First, you know, the market, you know, the, the little bit of the story of the half empty, half full glass. You know, we, we had uh, awful 2009, we had a better 2010. We have a better 2011, but overall, you know, I think it's still a little disappointing in terms of overall recovery. Well, there are about 18,000 business jets in the world, 85% of them or so are in the US and in Western Europe. And that market is recovering, but pretty slowly. And you know, I think even in 2011, I think people are still sitting on the fence, even though you know the growth 
in many economies is bad, profits are bad, but you know, just as this downturn has been the most severe, I think business aviation has known since it was uh, started about 50 years ago. Well, that's probably why it takes longer to, uh, to recover. And you know, the uh, Gamma just published uh, delivery statistics for the first quarter 2011. And if you look at the jet deliveries, we had only 128. That compares to 162 or 64 in 2010. And if you look at the peak of the market in the 2007 2008 time frame, you know, we're around 250. So that's that has been a tough ride for uh, our industry. So people are sitting on the fence for a lot of economic and uh, political reasons, but I hope that later in 2011 and certainly in 2012, we'll be uh, celebrating a, a strong and a real uh, recovery. So, you know, the <coughs> there are a few bright but, you know, everybody, and rightfully so, is speaking about Asia and China in particular. I know that for many OEMs in the last year or 18 months, China has been uh, the first market. That has been true for uh, Dassault. You know, I think we need to remain cautious about, you know, the, how long that uh, market can sustain, you know, very strong growth, but at the same time, you know, I'm always amazed at the basic statistic that, you know, you have a little over 100 airplanes in China and you have more than uh, 10,000 business jets in the U.S. So that's a ratio from 1 to 100. So somehow, when you look at the economy in China, the number of people, the number of uh, wealthy people, I think long term, you know, that should be, that should continue to be a, a great market for our industry. And you know, I think we all read about little encouraging statistics about you know fleet activities even in the US and in Europe. So as I said I really hope that we'll see a strong recovery in the 2012. Now we also think it's also interesting to look at the pre on aircraft market. It's always a good indicator of maybe what's going on. You know, the we had a nice trend in the second half of 2009 to see the overall inventory of airplane uh, decline uh, substantially. The little disappointing part is that if you look at uh, 2010 and earliest uh, 11, you know, the things have been a little more stable. Prices remain uh, pretty low, so that's still uh, a buyer's market, I would say. So those who need or want to buy an airplane, I still think it's a, it's a good time to do so. And, you know, uh, looking at uh, our friends from NetJet, you know, they, are, they will be a big actor in the pre market that they are uh, transforming uh, their fleet to your airplane, and uh, we'll see, you know, the impact of the airplane coming to market. But, you know, overall, you know, that fuel market remains a little depressed in terms of, uh, of pricing. So the market, you know, is still need to bounce back so that we are fully comfortable. And again, you know, I hope that a lot of uh, people who are sitting on the fence today will feel more comfortable in a few months to really start buying airplane in the core markets, the US and the Western Europe. So just, you know, going to the challenges of business aviation uh, in Europe. I was uh, in the US, you know, we had a tough time in uh, 2009 in particular when business aviation suddenly we had all this bashing going on. This did not take place in Europe, fortunately, but acceptance is still an issue in Europe, you know, and being French and when I watch 
the, uh, the equivalent of the Fortune 50 in France think you have less, much less than half, and maybe only 25% of these top companies who own and uh, fly a business jet. You know, they can afford it if it's total, you know, very profitable uh, old company, if it's L'Oreal, a lot of other uh, companies could avoid it that are still concerned about the image of business aviation. Fortunately, you know, our friends in the charter business are benefiting from that, but still, you know, acceptance is an image is still an issue in Europe, and that takes a long time to uh, to change. And fortunately, you know, similar to the no plane or no gain campaign, which is uh, still going on in the U.S., you know, I, it's great, and I want to salute the, the work of uh, EBA the <coughs> in terms of. Uh, Defending, you know, the value of business aviation as a business tool and also its contribution to the European economy. And I, the, <coughs> I have the figures on the U.S. side, and I know that on the European side, the two key figures you are mentioning, uh, Brian, are 20 billion economic uh, contribution and uh, over 150,000 jobs. So jobs are a powerful element of the defense of uh, business aviation. And, you know, EBA is also active on, uh, on many fronts. And I, you know, I'm sure that you have read or listened to uh, Brian and uh, all the EBA team. But, you know, just to mention quickly some of the challenges we are still facing. We have the famous uh, Euro Control Emission Trading Scheme, the famous ETS, which, you know, are continuing to be a problem in terms of administrative burden and, and cost. You know, we, whether it's DASO or the OEMs or the operators, you know, I think the <coughs> business aviation community is very much willing to participate in reducing the carbon emission, but, you know, the what's being put in front of us in terms of uh, administration and cost is not really uh, fair. Our friends in the UK are also uh, making it a little more difficult to own and operate uh, a business airplane with uh, uh, the duty they want to uh, impose on the business aviation. And I know that EBA, but also BBGA and the helicopter community is working hard on the issue, and I don't have the last update, Brian, but <coughs> I hope you, you are making some good inroads in that area. Well, you know, the, for operators, you know, crew duty time is also a problem for the pre-owned aircraft market, you know, and I see that, that uh, in the Falcon family, it's still uh, a big issue to import an airplane from an FAA environment into uh, EASA environment, so that's certainly not very helpful, but you know, that's what we are facing today. And on the regulation side, you know, both E-Gamma and Gamma in the U.S. have also uh, are working very hard to represent our industry, and you know, the, uh, I think we are making progress with EASA and the European Commission so that they recognize that we are a specific segment of uh, the aviation business and uh, we need to continue to do that as people are changing, in particular the European Commission, but you know, we have also had the opportunity to meet a lot of them both in Europe and in the US, so I hope we'll continue to make uh, good progress. And you know, the EASA will expand in 2012, the, the scope of their regulation in the new areas, such as operation, crew licensing, and so forth. So now we need to continue to work hard on that. And uh, not mentioning, you know, the fact that we have a problem with the funding mechanism of EASA, uh, where everything, you know, <coughs> has to be paid by the user, which doesn't help. So. That's part of the issues we are facing, and you know, 
the good news was that after, I think, almost three years of discussion, where the uh, famous US-EU bilateral aviation safety agreement uh, at, came into force earlier this month. So well, that's only the beginning. Now we have to make sure that the right procedures are established and implemented. And you know, we, it's important for us as an industry to, to have kind of a one-stop shop environment so that we can reduce uh, redundancies, expedite you know, the certification activities, which are both expensive and uh, painful in terms of uh, so it takes so long to, to get things certified. So, you know, that's a lot of uh, challenges for our industry. And, you know, as I mentioned, because Asia is becoming so important, we also need to establish stronger relationship with the uh, official authorities in India and in, uh, in China. You know, there are some intellectual property issues connected to that, but you know, that's important if we start selling a big percentage of our plane in that part of the world. And, you know, to conclude on the industry challenge, you know, I don't know if you are very familiar with the, all the future of the uh, air control system, but both CISA in Europe and uh, next gen in the U.S. is really essential so that, you know, aircraft movement can grow and our industry should benefit from that. So a few words about the, the Falcon family. You know, it was started 48 years ago with the first flight of the Mister Vin in Bordeaux in May uh, 1963. And since then, you know, we, we have uh, over 2,100 Falcons delivered and flying all over the world. and at this uh, 2011 edition of eBase, we announced a new member of the Falcon family, the Falcon 2000S, which you know will be our entry point in the family, and uh, we'll uh, work hard uh, to make it successful. But the initial reaction of the market seems to be good, and we are pleased with that. And if you look at the other end of the product line, you know we. Now I have uh, over 110 Falcon 7X in operation all over the world. We have a backlog for another two years of uh, delivery. So Falcon 7X is a great member of the family and we continue to invest in the long term. You know, we, we have a brand new Falcon, the, co the code name is SMS. We still keep the specification confidential for competitive reason, but that's a sign that uh, Dassault continues to believe and to invest a lot in the, in the long term. So that's something we'll continue to do, just as we continue to invest you know, in a truly global customer service organization. And we are working with a lot of people in this room to make it happen, and uh, there are new challenges uh, in Asia in particular, but that's something we'll, uh, we'll work on and we'll continue to invest a lot of money and energy to uh, accomplish that. So that's a quick overview of the things I wanted to share with you today. So thank you for joining us and uh, I'd be glad to answer a few questions. Thank you very much. Thank everybody for coming. Um, events like these are only, uh, only work when uh, they get participation and the support of everybody. Um, I'm very grateful to everybody who's come today. Um, and more importantly, I'm, I'm very grateful to the organizations that have sponsored the event. Firstly, we have to say thank you to Lufthansa Technique, who sponsored the cocktail. So we all had a free drink before lunch, care of Lufthansa. Thanks, that, thanks to them. Um, and to the table buyers, uh, Gamma, Marwan, thank you, um, BBA Group, David Best and Simon Price, thank you very much, uh, NetJets, Eric Connor, thank you Eric, um, Swiss Port Executive, Rebecca, somewhere, um, AIG, Robert, thank you, um, Pratt & Whitney, Ed, 
Thank you. Dasso, Jean, of course, you had to bring your supporters. Um, Jet Aviation, Peter and David Paddock, thank you. Uh, Airbus, Francois Chazelle, Francois, thank you. Uh, Cessna, uh, Mark Gallucci. Um, Seabury Group, Jeffrey Weston, thank you, Jeffrey. Um, USAIG, Dave, thank you. Uh, Boeing BBJ, Steve Taylor. Somewhere, yeah. Um, Executjet, Nile, thank you, Nile. Uh, COT, we have to thank our past president, Jeff Nittle, who's not here. Um, Aon, Universal Aviation, Greg Evans. And Bombardier, Steve Element. Thank you, guys. Thank everybody for supporting. Hopefully, I'm on time. Thank you for coming, and uh, hopefully, see you again next year. Mm -hmm.